Hello, I'm Reggie York. This is a presentation on common sense, critical thinking, and the scientific method and how those things are connected. This presentation is designed to help us to review the various ways we learn. How do we come to learn the things that we learn? Understand the meaning of common sense, critical thinking, and the scientific method. What do each of these mean? Then discover what common sense critical thinking and the scientific method have in common. Here are some of the ways we learn. Common sense sayings like two heads are better than one. Sometimes we use this in our, in our everyday life. Another is our own experiences, sometimes referred to as trial and error. We've learned a lot over the years through our own experiences and that guides us quite a bit. Also wisdom that is passed down to us from our elders, sometimes called tradition. And uh, critical thinking, which is based on logic and a certain structure of thinking. And science, which is also based on logic and a structure of thinking. Here's a definition of common sense. It's a basic ability to perceive, understand, and judge things which is shared by or common to nearly all people and can be reasonably expected of nearly all people without any need for debate. We don't usually debate whether two heads are better than one is a, a good thing or not. Here is a click to that particular definition. There are lots of definitions of it, of course. Uh, well, here are just a couple of examples of common sense sayings. Uh, two heads are better than one. Don't put the cart before the horse. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, and so forth. Let's look now at the question of what is science? What makes something scientific? Science is a method of acquiring knowledge through the logical analysis of observations guided by theory. Now we're going to look at the question of logic in a few minutes. We're going to examine theory as well and talk about how the three logic, theory, and science are tied together. What does method mean? The method of science is systematic. It entails predetermined steps of inquiry uh, that you, you, you decide on the steps of inquiry before you start collecting information. If you cannot clearly reveal the steps you use to analyze information, you have not been scientific. What is meant by logic? Logic refers to the principles of good argument. It is not based on scientific studies, but instead our understanding of what makes sense. For example, is it logical to say that the level of your satisfaction with this educational experience you're having today is caused by what you eat for breakfast tomorrow? Think about that. Sounds a little funny, doesn't it? That's because an event cannot be caused by something that came after it. It can be caused by something that came before it, but not something that came after it. So we're just talking about what makes sense. Suppose that someone asks you if you think that emphasizing standardized tests for school children is a good thing, and you say, yes. Then this person says, so you don't believe in instilling into children a love of learning. Think about that a little bit. Does that make perfect good sense, or is there a flaw there somewhere? Well, I'm going to illustrate the flaw by looking at the fact there are four possibilities as we think about the relationship believing in tests and believing in instilling a love of learning in children. Now we've looked at one of those. This particular person says, if you believe in tests, if you have yes for that, then you must not believe in instilling a love of learning. So you're assuming that this particular cell, number two, possibility number two, is the only possibility. But look at the structure. There are three other possibilities. Possibility one, three, and four. You could believe in tests. You could love, love, be, believe in instilling a love of learning or not. You could not believe in tests and, you, and, and either believe in uh, love of learning or, or not. So you've got really four possibilities. This person has assumed there is only one. So this is a logical flaw in that argument. 
Let's think about theory. Broadly speaking, a theory is an attempt to explain. Any attempt to explain is a theory at some level. You could ask yourself, what is my theory about my best friend? But any time we attempt to explain, we are using a theory at some level. Um, theory is based on logic and scientific research. A theory will not be embraced if it is not logical. A theory will not be will be subjected to verification through scientific studies. An example here, cognitive behavioral theory says that depression is caused by dysfunctional thinking about life events. It was used to design a theory, a therapy for depression. This model of therapy was subjected to scientific studies. The studies tended to support the effectiveness of this model in the treatment of depression. All the studies did not show that this particular therapy was effective, but an enorm enormous number of them, uh, and, and all, uh, most of the ones I have read, uh, do support, uh, do provide confirmation for uh, the particular approach. Let's look at the phases of scientific study. We've talked about science being systematic. Let's look at it from the standpoint of what, what are the logical steps for doing it. Number one, what is our research question or study uh, purpose? You may think of a number of different kinds of studies you want to do. Uh, is there a relationship between health and stress, for example? Next, what methods will be used to find the answer? Who will be in our study? What will we ask them? Uh, illustrated in this uh, book are some studies using students where they were asked questions about recent minor illness, stress, whether they exercise on a regular basis, and so forth. So those are parts of the uh, method of study. The third, what did our data analysis say about our research question? If we looked at the relationship between exercise and stress, would those who exercised uh, have lower stress? That's what your data, that's what you'll look for in your data to see if that's true or not. Then you'll draw conclusions about that. Is there a relationship between exercise and stress, for example? I'm going to give you a set of items. I want you to pause the, uh, hit the pause button and decide what is the best sequence of these steps. We've got four there. Tell me what is the logical first step, the logical second step, third step, and fourth step. Then come back and we'll talk about uh, these different steps. Okay, as we look at this, um, the logical first step is your research question, which is op option C. The logical second step is B, where you're talking about um, methods. Logical third step is D, which shows the findings. And the logical fourth step is A, which has to do with conclusion. Let's look at common sense and science. Don't put the cart before the horse is a phrase related to the systematic nature of scientific method. You start the process with the question to be answered rather than the methods to be used. You don't say, for example, I'm going to, your first thought in a research study should not be, I'm going to conduct a mail survey. I'm going to send, get a survey and I'm going to send it out to people. That's what I want to do. Now I'm going to start thinking of a research question to answer using that method. That would be a, back, a backwards way of doing uh, a scientific study. Two heads are better than one is a phrase consistent with the theme of verifying the accuracy of the data we analyze in scientific studies. If we use a lousy tool for measuring depression, for example, our study of it will not be a very good study. Let's think about critical thinking. Um, mode of thinking that is founded on logical analysis, which refers to the rules of good argument and suggests that our thinking be broken down into interrelated parts so that the assumptions on which we draw conclusions can be clearly displayed and argued about. Uh, this, uh, of course, uses logic, but it also uh, has a way of breaking down the thinking that goes to the drawing of conclusions into specific parts, and the assumptions of those would then be examined and could be argued about as you try to improve 
your analysis of the question you are examining. It is about avoiding errors in judgment that leads to things like impulse buying. Here are some things you do as a critical thinker. Clarify your purpose. The first part has to do a lot about the clarity of things. The second one also clarity of things. Clarify, clarify the assumptions underlying given arguments or positions on the, the issue. Also gather information in an unbiased way. Check information for clarity, accuracy, and fairness. Draw conclusions that are appropriate for the data. As you can see here, if you're, if you're a critical thinker, you're going to spend a lot of time with your analysis. You're going to do things like those presented here before you draw conclusions. And those conclusions, of course, will be appropriate based on the analysis you did. Logic is one of the main connectors of, of science, common sense, and critical thinking. Phases of research are logical. It's logical, for example, to start with, what is my research question? Rather than, do I want to conduct an interview? And so forth. Critical thinking is based on logic. You must subject the claims to logic. Do, do they make sense? If someone says something, it's in a part of a critical thinking analysis that simply does not make logical sense, then you have to address that particular question. Common sense is based on logic. Sayings would not endure without logic. I'm sure we've had some sayings over the years that have been uh, refuted because uh, experience and study and so forth showed maybe it wasn't so uh, such a good idea after all. I, I could think of one, so for example, spare the rod and spoil the child. Well, I suggest you should whip your child. Well, that's not a good idea. So that's one that we can, we can drop from our sayings if we'd like. Here's a summary. We have discussed the nature of science, of common sense, and of critical thinking. More importantly, we have examined the connections between these three major themes. We have seen that these are limbs from the same tree. That is the end of my presentation. I hope this will be helpful to you.